Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to set up and use our multimeter. Now we're going to be using uh, the beautiful AVO 835, uh, which was given to us by Mega for use in our videos. And we're going to show you how to set this up. And also more importantly, how we should connect meters in order to measure various different values. So we'll bring the camera in and we'll have a look at how we do this. So we have here our Mega AVO 835. This is a really, really nice top of the range multimeter. Uh, this has got an awful lot of functions on here uh, and we're gonna explore some of these as we go through. Now, some of the uh, more mature viewers who are watching at the moment may remember the old AVO meters. This immediately reminded me uh, of that. Uh, these were very, very early meters that were manufactured and AVO uh, stood for amps, volts and ohms. So what we're going to do in a series of videos is we're going to look, start off by looking at the A for amps. We're going to do that first and then we'll produce uh, future videos that explore the other functions on here going way beyond amps, volts and ohms as well where we can look at lots and lots of very interesting things that this bit of kit does and that uh, your meter will also likely do. So let's get started. So we're gonna start off by measuring current. We're gonna start off by measuring amps. So if you look down here at the bottom of the meter, we've got these four terminals. Now, the really, really clever thing about the AVO 835 is that as you twist to the different settings, what happens is that uh, the terminals open up and block off that are required. Now that's really, really handy because we can damage our multimeter quite badly if we set it up in the wrong way. So first of all, we'll turn to the milliamps range. So with the milliamps range selected, you can see down here, we want to select the common. Now, if your meter doesn't uh, cover up the terminals that you don't need, uh, just look out for the setting here. So you can see uh, there's no mention of amps or current around this terminal. Uh, here we've got 10 amps, which is a much larger range than we're looking at. We're looking at milliamps, thousandths of an amp. So we'll plug in here to the 100 milliamps and see what measure we get. So we always have one lead in the common. Generally speaking, that's the black. So we'll plug that in there. Okay. And we then put the red lead into the other terminal, the one that we're gonna be using. Okay. So this is currently set up uh, to measure milliamps. Now you'll notice that there is a white setting and a yellow setting. So the white setting uh, represents the initial uh, value that it will be measuring. Okay, so here we're in milliamps and then we can change to the yellow setting by pressing the mode button. So here what we're gonna do on the milliamp setting is we're going to select by pressing the mode button, we're gonna change it to the DC measurement. Okay, so here we're now measuring DC. So if you look up here, yep, you can see that says DC now instead of AC. So that's gonna give us a nice accurate reading. So. Don't worry about the fact that this has got a little value on there. Let's put this into context. That's, measured, that's telling us 0 0.19 of a milliamp. So that's a tiny, tiny little fraction of a thousandth of an amp. Okay, so essentially that is now set to zero. What we'll then do is use our leads. Okay, now we're dealing with extra low voltage here because we've only got a 12 volt supply coming in. But uh, what we'll do is we'll keep the uh, sheaths on the tips here to make sure, uh, just, to, just for best practice really. Uh, when we're measuring live stuff, even though this, this is not going to hurt us in any way. So let's measure the current in this circuit now. So we've got our circuit connected up. We've got current flowing through this series circuit. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure uh, what that current is. Now, this is a classic exam situation. This is where the lecturer comes out in me. We always get asked in exams, how are ammeters connected into a circuit? And the answer is they're always connected in series. Now to achieve that, what we need to do is we need to remove a link from the circuit. Okay, so if, again, if you were doing this in the real world, we may need to uh, separate out a couple of wires and connect our ammeter up that way. Although there are other ways of measuring current as well, which we'll learn about in a future video. And then we persuade the current to leave the circuit, go through the multimeter, and then back into the circuit again. So if we connect onto these two uh, terminals here now, we should get our current reading. So there you can see we're getting 1.1 uh, milliamps of current flowing through there on the DC setting. So that's the current flow through this circuit. So we've successfully measured current. 
with our multimeter set up to measure DC. Uh, just a point, if we wanted to check the current on this side of the circuit, uh, what we would find is that we'd have exactly the same value. So we could remove a link from this side and we'd measure the same current here. Current doesn't get used up in a circuit, it's just a measure of how much electricity is flowing around the circuit uh, at a time. What we can now do is uh, we'll pause and we'll switch over to an AC supply and then we'll see how we set up our meter to measure AC current. So what we've done now is we've uh, taken out our DC power supply and we've brought in an AC power supply. Now this is still in the extra low voltage range. Uh, I'm at absolutely no risk from getting uh, harmed or injured in any way from this uh, connection. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to set up your meter now to measure AC current. So what we'll do is we'll have a look on the multimeter here. Now it's currently set up to measure DC. Obviously with your own multimeter, you need to look at what it's capable of measuring and not. Uh, some ammeters won't have uh, all the settings that this one does, so it may not measure AC, it may not measure DC, you need to look at it. But if it will measure both AC and DC, what you'll need to do is you'll need to tell the multimeter what you are measuring, whether it's DC or AC. So again, we press the mode button, and now we've started cycling through the different options that are available on this setting here. So now we're measuring frequency, we're not going to measure that today, we'll come back to that in a future video. And now we're measuring AC current. So that's what we've got going on there. So if we just pop that down there, and again, following exactly the same principle that we followed before, we're gonna connect up our meter in uh, series with the circuit. So our meters are connected in series, remember that. And we're gonna measure the current flowing into the circuit and we're getting 1.4 milliamps there. So we're getting 1.4 milliamps. So that's our AC current measurement. So we've changed our circuit about quite a bit now. What we've got is just one resistor connected to our AC power supply. Now, the reason I've left a link out here is that we're actually about to have a relatively large amount of current flowing into the circuit here, and I don't want to damage uh, the resistor there. I don't want to damage that component. So what we can look at doing here now is we can look at how do we change the multimeter in order to measure higher values of current. First of all, how would we know what range to start on? Now, I know from my personal experience and from uh, my maths that uh, there's going to be way beyond the upper limit of this uh, setting flowing through the circuit. So there's going to be way more than 100 milliamps flowing through here, and I could risk uh, blowing a fuse within the multimeter, which I don't want to damage my equipment. I don't want to risk doing that. So as a rule of thumb, if you don't know what the value is going to be, if you don't know what range or setting to have your multimeter on, always start at the safest setting, which in this case is the highest one. So what we would do here is we would swap this over now to measure amps instead of milliamps. So now we've changed this round and notice when we do that, this terminal will get, now gets covered up and this one gets revealed. So that's where we're gonna pop our lead now. So now we're into the amps range on our multimeter. And what we'll do is we'll just measure this very, very quickly. So as I say, I don't want to melt my resistor. So we'll measure this very quickly. Again, we're connecting our multimeter up in series because we're measuring current. And we're on the AC setting, so we sorted for that. We could do it for DC if we wanted. And we'll just see what current flows. Okay, so you can see there, it's about 1.1 of an amp. So that's the value that we're looking at there, about 1.1 of an amp. Now you may have noticed that when we were carrying out that test that the meter briefly said OL. Now what that means is over limit. In other words, it's gone beyond the range of what it can measure. Now this multimeter will clearly measure up to 10 amps on this setting and we weren't measuring anywhere near 10 amps. The reason it did that is that the meter is set on the auto ranging function. So what that means is that the multimeter, it kind of will monitor how much current flows and then it will pick the most relevant range to show you the answer in. So it just for a minute, it goes over the limit of what it initially knows and then it will settle back down to the correct value. You can tell it what range you want it set into. If you keep pressing the range button there, you can see that what happens is the decimal point moves about. So you can see there that that's gonna change the uh, how many decimal points we get at the end of that value. So if we're measuring very, very small currents, we'll be able to get quite a small reading out of that. And if we want to go back into the uh, auto ranging mode, just do a long press on the range button on this meter, and that will return you to the auto mode.
So we've seen in this video uh, how to set up a multimeter to measure current. We know that the multimeter needs to be connected in series. And we've just seen a couple of things that will hopefully help us uh, not to damage our multimeter while we're carrying out this testing procedure. So as always, thank you for watching.